How you doing, everyone? You all right? I am curious about your, your scene when you're growing up. And I know that's a cliche question, but you live in this part of the world that I've never been to. I've never been to, I don't think. Um, and Lincolnshire. You, okay. Yeah. Lincolnshire. Is it rural? It's country and yeah, it's seaside? Beautiful. And it's beautiful. Yeah, you, you summed it up. It's beautiful. It's, um, you know, it's a blank canvas. Yeah. And so uh, it's a good place for a creative kid in a house full of instruments. Yeah. And, and did you start writing songs when you were little? Yeah, like that was the kind of like, I never really wanted to play guitar. I just wanted to write songs. And, yeah. You know, yeah. And, then, uh, and then you discovered busking at, as a teenager probably, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and do you remember your first time busking? Was that terrifying? I was in London and uh, yeah, uh, I didn't do it with an amplifier. And that was a mistake. And, uh, Nobody stopped because they couldn't hear uh, you. No one, no one, no one. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but uh, then I got an amplifier and it was all good, you know. And so you had to have a, did you have a battery powered amplifier? Uh, solar. Solar, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You can only play during the day, Hamst of course. Hamster powered. Yeah. Little hamster wheel running around. Or rabbit. Yeah. Until the, uh, until the uh, PETA came after you. <clears throat> um, I, re I pretty much revolutionized modern, um, you know. Like modern clothes. busking. Yeah. <laughs> the ancient tradition. I will say that um, there's, there's a lot, there's a, di it's a different thing to play on the street. You know, you, you have a short window of opportunity to try to capture somebody's attention as they're walking by. Yeah. And uh, you have to try to figure out a way to hang on to them and, and, and keep them engaged. That's right. Yeah. And, and it's not unlike probably uh, putting on a show now, but it's, it's a little more immediate, right? Well, I kind of try and bring in the same thing, you know, like what we're doing now, you know, like yeah. the way we talk to each other. It's yeah. normal, isn't it? I think so. Well, I mean, it's not normal, is it? Yeah. But it's as close to normal as you're going to get out of me. <laughs> but I mean, like, you know, it gave me a, gave me a, uh, certainly gave me a perspective on uh, entertainment being something more personable. Yeah. And it's actually, uh, it's actually a pretty good gig if you do it well, right? I mean, you can make some serious money busking. You can, get, yeah, you can yeah. have a pretty good, pretty good uh, gig. And, um, and I'm sure there are times when really cool things happen because somebody walked by and was just turned on by what you were doing. Like, hey, I've got this club or hey, I've got this thing, right? Yeah, hey, I've got this liquid acid, that kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. What are you doing this afternoon type thing? Yeah. What are you doing? I'm just for the chilling out, really. But. Yeah. What are you doing for the next three days? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know who you are. <laughs> <laughs> no, but yeah, uh, it's, uh, it's. That explains how you met Ron Wood, actually. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there's a busking accident. <laughs> yeah. It can happen. It can happen. No, how did that happen, actually? How did you meet Ron Wood? Did that, did that... I met him at a Stones gig. At a Stones gig? Well, like a launch party for a Stones album. Yeah. I was playing at the launch party. Oh, there you go. So that probably... That old chestnut. Yeah. But that's the gig you got from busking, probably. Something like that. Yeah. And then... Uh, but you got on with each other and, and you opened some shows for him and... Yeah, yeah. I just did a few shows with him and um, he's, a, he's a wonderful man. Yeah. You know? um, and... Uh, Hope to do some more. That's yeah. cool. Um, I want to ask you a little bit about your new record because you recorded some of it in Nashville and some of it in Montreal, and those are such different musical scenes. Hmm. So, so what, what were you going after? What were you, what were you thinking about those two cities? Well, I was recording in Nashville, and I live in Montreal, so... Um, oh, there you go. <laughs> okay. So when we didn't finish the record in Nashville, we finished it in Montreal. I see. <laughs> no, but, uh, but uh, you know, it was... A <laughs> Yeah. Um, but uh, I, I worked with a, a fabulous producer called Bruce Cameron, who um, is a dear friend of mine. But uh, he really um, understood the balance between some of the material I was trying to put together because yeah. there's some rock and roll on the record. There's some uh, pretty folky stuff on it too, uh, which you'll hear a little later on. But uh, he really understood the balance of how to put all that together. So that, that really to me was the saving grace of using two studios. Was, yeah. uh, he, he, he made it sound like one studio. Yeah. And you and your dad came played a little bit on your record too. He did, yeah. That yeah, comes, he's all over comes it. full circle. Yeah, he's all over it. He's on it like vomit. <laughs> <laughs> he's on it like a tramp on chips. 
That's a busking phrase, by the way. <laughs> you only learn that stuff if you're on the street. Um, He's on it like a car bonnet. Uh, like a car bonnet, okay. Mm. That's, you only learn that if you grew up in England. Yeah. <laughs> um, this could go on, but it won't. <laughs> uh, I feel like I'm a cult figure in the uh, <laughs> You're dressed sort of like one. It's nice. It's good. It's a good look. Yeah. I like your shirt. <laughs> Listen, I, um, I appreciate the fact that you are, um, you know, you're making it up as you go along. And that, <laughs> Aren't we both? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. Thank God for post-production. No, the beauty is uh, music, music really does connect us. It's fun to play music with you, and it's really cool to see you. I want to ask you one last thing, which is about, um, you know, I think we've all had, or many of us have had an opportunity to play slide instruments with various things, pieces of wine bottles or glass or steel or whatever. Um, I've never seen anybody use a flask before, although there's no reason not to. But what I'm curious about is that it's got this sort of extra leverage because mm. of the, the width of it. And you use it really well to get this sort of like uh, a, a more intense vibrato and in some ways even just a little more range. Is that something that just, I mean, it's, it's obvious, but it just came with practice, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, um, it's the perfect tool for the job, really. Yeah. And, uh, and it's also very practical. Yeah. yeah. That's a lot of liquid acid in there. You said it. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> whatever works, man. Hey, whatever you're doing is working fine. We're actually, we're going to get back to music. Uh, welcome back to E-Town, if you would. Our new friend from uh, Lincolnshire, now living in Montreal, Jack Broadbent. Hi, this is Nick Forster from E-Town. If you want to stay up to date with all the performances, interviews, and behind-the-scenes footage, click the subscribe button. Thanks. <laughs>